Hello everyone, I seem to be coming down with the flu, which uh, couldn't happen in a worse time since there are so many games between Alpha Zero and Stockfish uh, I uh, am very eager to show you. Uh, but then again, it's uh, never a good time to come down with the flu, so um, uh, let's just check uh, another very nice game. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very nice game, it features a very old opening and uh, the position reached in the game was uh, only once reached before. Uh, in in tournament chess, which uh, we're gonna discuss when we get uh, to that position. Uh, but uh, since well, if you're following any chess news on the internet, you probably already read the uh, the academic report, uh, the academic paper from DeepMind uh, regarding Deep Blue and uh, the updated version of Alpha Zero and another match against Stockfish. Uh, out of a thousand games, uh, you will also be able to see the result uh, of that match in the description below, uh, where Alpha Zero lost only six games and. Uh, uh, it is said in that paper that Alpha Zero also faced the uh, the newest version of Stockfish that was uh, only in development, and that it also defeated that version of Stockfish uh, with similar results. And also, uh, they tried pairing uh, Alpha Zero against Stockfish, where uh, Stockfish had uh, more time, like uh, 10 to 1, and also Alpha was able to prevail. Uh, the only time Alpha was struggling when, when Stockfish was allowed uh, the use of opening books. Uh, there, Stockfish won a couple, uh, some games with White, uh, but still Alpha Zero won the match. So that being said, uh, do check it out in the description below. There's uh, really a lot of data. I'm sure you're all, you're all going to enjoy it. So let's get uh, back to this game. So uh, like we said, this is uh, out of the games I received. This is uh, game number nine, I believe, where Alpha actually has the black pieces. So let's see how it went. We have e4 by Stockfish, uh, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to c4. So the Italian game is on the board. We have bishop to c5, uh, and here uh, Stockfish goes for b4, the Evans Gambit. Uh, I was trying to make that into a, into a nicer joke, but I'm just uh, I'm just feeling too too ill. Uh, D3 was of course played. Uh, we have A6, and now uh, Stockfish immediately goes for the weak F7 pawn, Knight to G5. So the threat is of course now Bishop captures uh, and the Knight captures on F7, uh, and we have Knight to H6. Uh, Alpha defends the F7 pawn, and there is no immediate way of uh, taking advantage of anything here. And this is what I was talking about. If you look at this position, it seems like something uh, that you would expect out of a two knights defense, where White goes Knight G5, and then Black tries to defend with Knight to H6, uh, with the difference of A. 6 and, uh, and the d3 being played, and this knight never actually came to f6. Uh, but okay, regardless, this uh, this position was only once before reached, uh, and it was in, in 1999 in a game between uh, Michael Palmer and uh, Eckhart Burke. So, as you can see, uh, the, it was a uh, uh, it was a game played uh, between these two gentlemen, and they are rated uh, around 1,000. So it's in interestingly that uh, Stockfish with white and Alpha Zero with black go for the same line as these two gentlemen. And this is o the only such game available in database. So it's also important that the next time you see two gentlemen playing chess, you know, you might uh, disregard that game because they, you know, that uh, might be lower rated players, but who knows, they might be playing uh, out a masterpiece such as this one. And uh, even though in that game uh, White continued with uh, Queen to f3, allowing Knight to d4, uh, but uh, White started uh, a very nice attack and in the end uh, won the game. Uh, here uh, Stockfish goes for Castle. Uh, we have d6 by Alpha Zero, making room for this light square bishop to be developed. Uh, a4, a very nice uh, move, taking uh, taking more space on the queen side, preventing b5. Uh, also, a5 will be an idea in the future. Uh, and now bishop to g4. This knight on h6 now actually comes very handy as it uh, gives protection to the bishop on g4. You cannot uh, play f3 because Alpha's bishop is pinning the f2 pawn. So, knight back to f3, and here... Uh, it seems awkward uh, this bishop is threatening to capture the knight, so and uh, there's really no good way to, to move the knight. Uh, but Alpha doesn't mind, he simply castles. And uh, bishop captures on h6 is definitely a possibility. Uh, but neither Alpha nor Stockfish are really considering this. Uh, first, Stockfish goes h3, kicks away the bishop, bishop to h5, and now c3. A very nice move at, in the future, uh, b4 will be an idea, d4 will be an idea, and also it takes away the b4 square from the knight. 
Uh, and here, king to h8. Uh, a very nice move uh, that, I don't know, uh, I, will, I will often play a move like this in blitz games. Uh, so, so when bishop captures uh, is eventually played, then I will already have a semi-open file for the rook. And here, uh, it seems that alpha zero does exactly that. Also, it unpins, and now the f7 pawn can be played. And while this knight is on h6, uh, it actually supports the pawn to be pushed to f5. So in this moment, Stockfish decides to capture it. We have bishop captures on h6, g captures on h6 and now knight bd2 uh, stockfish continues uh, his development uh, now d4 as we've mentioned will be an idea in the future b4 will be an idea knight b3 could be an idea so first alpha retreats with the bishop not allowing this bishop on c5 to stay a target uh, bishop to d5 uh, now with uh, ideas of uh, either pinning the knight as the b7 pawn is a target or even capturing uh, then black will have a, a ruined pawn structure on the queen side as well as on the king side. And here alpha decides to make the game more interesting. Knight e7, attacking the bishop on d5, but also offering the b7 pawn. So stockfish snatches it. Bishop captures on b7. We have rook to b8, and now even ro bishop captures on a6. So if you look at this position... Uh, Stockfish has 8 pawns, alpha 0 has 6 pawns, uh, he just sacrificed uh, 2 pawns on the queen side and his king side is completely shattered. So without worrying about material, without considering ideas like rook captures on b2, I mean surely uh, alpha considered it, but uh, f5, a very nice idea, uh, while you're, you know, you just sacrifice 2 pawns, you want to go for the attack. Uh, king to h1, uh, Stockfish does a similar idea as the bishop here is pinning the f2 pawn, so we do want to move the king, and at one point if uh, the g uh, pawn disappears, then rook will be able to come to g1 uh, to counter alpha's rooks on the g file. Uh, knight to g6, and now comes e captures on f5, and here knight to f4, Not again, not caring for material, but here it would be a very complicated game if you captured, then g4 is coming, the, the, the rook and bishop are under attack, and here, okay, you are losing maybe uh, a piece, but uh, white would be under tremendous pressure here. Uh, but alpha thinks knight to f4 uh, is better, so knight to f4 and now d4, closing off the bishop's uh, influence uh, along this diagonal. Uh, we have rook captures on f5 now, and now queen to c2. Here, uh, alpha uh, Stockfish doesn't even want to go for g4. If g4 here, then we have this very nice rook captures on b2. And now, if you capture on f5, then we get rook captures here. Uh, you can't capture with the knight because the bishop will capture the queen. So queen captures and now bishop captures with check. King h2 and after queen to h4, uh, white is getting checkmated. And it doesn't matter much uh, after rook captures on b2 if you capture the bishop. If you capture the bishop, then this queen to a8 is deadly. Uh, you will move this knight, then there will be a double attack here. And uh, whatever, black, whatever white plays, it will simply not be enough. If you try to defend it with bishop to e2, uh, then rook captures on h5. Now the threat is rook captures on h3, followed by queen to, queen to g8. And uh, it's actually a forced mate in 11 here. Uh, but okay, after rook captures on f5, we have queen to c2. Now getting the queen out of this diagonal, g4 becomes a threat once again. Uh, so now rook back to f8 by alpha. Uh, we have rook a to e1. And now queen to f6. Alpha wants to go queen, queen g7 and then checkmate stockfish on g2. Uh, rook to e3, a very nice rook lift, introduces the rook uh, into the defense. And now queen to g7. The threat is now queen captures on g2 with checkmate. Uh, rook to g1 defending. Uh, this was one of the ideas when uh, stockfish, stockfish played king to h1. Uh, we have knight to d5. And now comes bishop to b5. Uh, if you move the rook... Uh, for example, rook e to e1, uh, then black will simply open lines. e captures on d4, and after pawn captures, now knight to b4, attacking the queen. Uh, and also uh, the bishop on a6, so this is one of the problems. And if you want to keep defending the bishop, for example, queen c4, uh, you will get the d5, and now the queen will have to go all the way back to keep uh, defense of the bishop on a6. It will be a very passive position to play, and stockfish doesn't like it. So, after knight d5, bishop to b5. Uh, and now comes bishop to g6 with an attack on the queen, queen c1, and now stock uh, alpha decides to capture uh, the rook. Uh, we have knight captures on e3, and now comes f captures on e3. Uh, we have bishop to f7. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, bishop to f7, and now rook to f1. Uh, 
bishop to d5, now comes bishop to c4, uh, countering uh, alpha's bishop, and now bishop to a8. And now, as you can see, alpha has a bishop on a7, a bishop on a8, and uh, as you can see, the bishop pair is simply uh, a monstrosity here. Uh, a5, uh, we have e4. Uh, this e4 seems like a very weird decision, but uh, uh, alpha has a very nice plan. It seems uh, seems counterintuitive to block your own bishop on a8 like this by pushing e4. Uh, but uh, alpha's idea is to push e4, even d5, uh, and then attack the base of the pawn chain, either by making sure this rook at some point captures on b2, or after this knight moves, the queen will somehow attack the, the base of the pawn chain here on e3. Uh, so we have e4, knight to h2, and now comes queen to g5. So uh, now the e3 pawn is attacked. And here Stockfish allows alpha to capture it, b4. Uh, if you defend it with uh, queen e1, then queen captures on a5 first is an idea. First you eliminate this pawn, uh, so white will not have a protected to pass pawn uh, uh, on a5. Once Stockfish pushes b4, and after b4 queen comes back to g5, uh, white really doesn't have all that many moves. Bishop b3, uh, black will exchange here, rook captures, queen captures, and now after this rook comes into the game and the bishops uh, come alive, white will have a very difficult position to play. Uh, so, after queen g5, b4 immediately, protecting the a5 pawn, and rather giving up the e3 pawn. So, queen captures on e3, and now comes knight to g4, trying to activate the knight with an attack on the queen, also on the h6 pawn, Queen to g5, and now queen to e1. Uh, and now comes h5. We have knight to e3, and now even h4. Alpha isn't worried about knight back to g4, as he does have another h pawn to push back the knight. Uh, so after h4, we have bishop to e6, uh, with some ideas of controlling the f5 square. So perhaps a bishop to f5 will be an idea here. Uh, but after alpha's bishop to c6, Stockfish uh, doesn't go bishop to f5, rather he goes back, bishop to c4. And now after d5, uh, Stockfish goes for b5. Uh, b5 is a very nice move because you cannot capture the pawn. Rook captures will simply remove the defender and then uh, Stockfish will grab the bishop on b5. So after b5, we have bishop to b7 uh, and now bishop back to b3. Uh, rook b to c8 and now comes a6. Bishop to a8 and now bishop to a4. And here, uh, if you try and play something like c5, which does uh, seem to make sense, you know, op opening up lines and make your bishops come alive, uh, this will actually be uh, a very nice draw after uh, capturing on c6 en passant. Rook captures, queen captures, and now after bishop captures, bishop captures, rook captures, you will have queen to f8 check, and now black will have a very hard time getting out of this check. Uh, well, it will not be possible after a queen to f5. Uh, attacking the d5 on threatening queen e5 check, uh, you can parry everything. Uh, after rook captures, you will simply continue checking uh, the black king. So uh, here, uh, a move like uh, c5 would be uh, an off uh, a draw offer. So bishop to b6, uh, king to g1, and now queen to g3. Here, alpha decides to offer a queen trade. As you've seen, uh, an active idea like c5 uh, does not uh, uh, give uh, alpha opportunities to go for a win. So, queen captures, h captures, and now rook back to a1. Uh, we have rook to f2, attacking the knight on d2, and now comes knight to f1. Uh, rook to e2, and now knight back to f5. And here, uh, the g3 pawn is under attack, and there is really no good way for you to defend it. We have rook to g8, knight captures on g3, and now rook to d2, uh, making room for this uh, pawn to be pushed at some point. Uh, we have rook to f1, and now comes bishop to a5, going after the c3 pawn. Uh, rook to f2, rook captures, king captures, and bishop captures on c3. Uh, it's uh, very interesting, but uh, as long as this uh, pawn is on d5 and uh, alpha's bishop is on a8, it doesn't seem like this bishop is coming alive anytime soon, but uh, this was uh, alpha's plan all along. Uh, he will uh, eliminate <laughs> these pawns, and then uh, it, it will be possible once again to reactivate this bishop. Uh, we have h4 by Stockfish, rook to f8, uh, king to e3, but now bishop to e1, attacking the knight on g3. You cannot uh, move it anywhere, since the knight on g3 is also protecting the knight on f5. And here, alpha makes just a, a brilliant sequence of moves. King e2, bishop captures, knight captures, and now rook back to g8. You have to play king to f2 to protect the knight, otherwise you're going to lose the g2 pawn. So, king f2, and now comes rook to g4. And this is how alpha releases uh, this light square bishop from his prison. Uh, alpha's plan is e3 
with check and there's no way to stop this. Uh, bishop to d1, stockfish attacks alpha uh, rook, but now e3 with check. You cannot capture because you're going to lose the knight, so first king f3 and now rook captures on d4. Uh, you still can capture the pawn because your bishop is hanging on d1, uh, so bishop to e2 and now comes rook to b4. Uh, going after the pawns at some point rook b3 is coming this pawn will be pushed to d2 block the bishop and then this rook will pick up the pawns uh, king captures on e3 we have d4 with check king moves and now uh, rook to b2 check king to e1 uh, you can't go up for example king d3 because rook here checks uh, and wins the knight so after rook b2 check king e1 uh, we have a rook to b3 attacking the knight Knight to h5 and now finally d3, uh, eliminating the defender of the b5 pawn. Not eliminating it, but uh, it's no longer defending the b5 pawn. Uh, bishop to d1, rook captures on b5. We have knight to f4 and now rook to a5. Uh, g3, rook captures on a6. We have knight captures on d3 and now uh, you can see that this is... Uh, uh, both uh, Alpha and Stockfish have two pawns, but Alpha has uh, a rook and a bishop against a bishop and a knight. So this is by all means winning, uh, and uh, Alpha has no problem proving this, uh, proving why this is winning. So this is mo already move 64, and the game lasts for 100 moves. So as you can see, it's often the case where when two humans play, then the game will often last much uh, less when one of the players uh, reaches a winning advantage. But here, Stockfish defends properly, so uh, it will take alpha some time uh, we have uh, king, king d2 uh, bishop to f7 g4 and now alpha starts activating his king knight f2 we have uh, rook to a8 bishop to e2 and the rook to a4 now going after the pawns uh, bishop to d1 we have rook to d4 check king e3 and now after uh, a couple of more moves where uh, alpha is going all around trying to trying to trick stockfish stockfish defense properly uh, but at one point uh, you can see that uh, slowly, slowly but surely, uh, Stockfish is making concessions. And now, after h5 has been played, uh, now Stockfish has a light square bishop, and both of his pawns are on light squares. And now, sooner or later, this king will make his trip all the way to g5, uh, threaten to capture the g4 pawn. And as Alpha also has a light square bishop, uh, Alpha will assist the king in capturing the g4 pawn. So, knight d1, we have bishop to h7, knight b2, king e7, knight c4, rook to a6, uh, knight e5, king to f6, knight d7 check, king to g5, now the king is in position, and now all that's left is for this bishop to, to join the attack against the g4 pawn, snatch the pawn, and then it's a winning game. Uh, bishop e2, we have rook to e6 check, king to f2, and after rook to e7, uh, it was in this position actually on move 97, I missed when I said 100, uh, is when Stockfish resigned the game. Uh, why did Stockfish resign? Well, after the knight moves, uh, the plan is simple. You will simply kick away the knight, then prepare to, uh, uh, prepare a move with the bishop, and then after one more move, you will play something like bishop to d5, bishop uh, is coming to e6, and then you will at some point capture here, and then it's a completely winning game. So yeah, uh, after rook to e7, uh, Stockfish resigned the game, and uh, I really do hope you enjoyed this, uh, as it uh, almost featured an Evans Gambit, a very nice Italian game, and uh, like I said, after this knight to h6, uh, it was a game only once played in chess history between Mr. Michael Palmer and uh, Eckhard Burke, uh, gentleman rated 1000, so like I said, uh, whenever you see someone playing a chess game, they could be playing out uh, a masterpiece. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Bruce Cummings, uh, Paravis uh, Gatja Savant, uh, Dejan Subotic, Johannes Broadwall, and uh, Miki Gramatico for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon uh, with uh, another very nice Alpha vs. Stockfish game. Uh, thank you all, and I will see you soon.